folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Samurai Cop. It's a story about a renegade Japanese American cop named Joe Marshall who teams up with a black partner named Washington and they go around busting some drug dealers as well as a henchman named Yamashita along with Fuji Fuyama. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to do that just to be funny. I'm trying to do it exactly like how they intended to do it uh, when I saw the movie. Because I actually saw this movie at Robbie's house, you know, Quinn's his best friend, you know, when we were doing a podcast, and I was watching this as a double feature with uh, Maximum Overdrive, so I guess we have to go for the level of, of B-movies here for entertainment. Uh, but yes, uh, this is an entertainingly bad movie, totally ridiculous, but yet you have fun with it, because <laughs> it wasn't meant to take itself so seriously. In a whole way. Um, so this is sort of like a, a take on buddy cop films like um, Lethal Weapon for example. And it seems like it too, like I would imagine you know Riggs being the the samurai and <laughs> and Murtaugh being stone-faced <laughs> and looked like he was just taking drugs as Frank Washington. <laughs> I guess he ain't too old for this shit. In fact, he's very young. Oh, <laughs> also, there's even a, a lieutenant who's just, uh, yeah, as usual with all these buddy cop films, we always have a lieutenant who always yells at the cops to tell them to do their jobs right. Cause they're always, uh, you know, ruining the the police department. But you basically see him just acting like he's daydreaming, like like he's thinking about having sex with a girl. And then there's a scene where Washington actually kisses him. <laughs> oh man, this is just so hilarious. Uh, it, it's a very strange movie, but you know, it makes it up for it. Um, it was shot on a micro budget. Um, the whole film was shot during the day, so there was no night shots whatsoever, because the director, Amarer Chevron, is no longer with us. Yeah, he died uh, at the age of 77. Only did five movies during his, the course of his career, with this being his last. I can't believe it. Now I can see why. <laughs> He couldn't afford the lighting equipment, so he had to shoot the entire film exactly this way. And on top of that, uh, he couldn't get some of the actors to re to return. And just once the the film was finished, so he had to provide his own ADR to dub the voices of those actors. Well, some of them. Um, but I thought that was pretty clever. So it's in that particular level. Um, the editing is pretty uh, jarring to look at at times. You know, like it starts to repeat some of the same shots here and there. Um, some of the the film quality, even for its grainy source, I mean, it, it doesn't. Sometimes it it deteriorates. And when it comes to the editing process, like one shot to the other is always uh, not looking as good as it seems. Although, granted, it does look pretty sharp the way I saw it. I mean, it's in HD when when I watched the movie. Also, probably the most hilarious of them all was when they started to shoot these scenes with close-ups of the actors, but with a long headroom shot. So it has more headroom on the top than in the bottom, and I thought that was pretty funny. So it just plays it as an inside joke, and they're just showing all these close-ups of the actors, uh, you know, looking completely stoned out of their minds. I mean, like... And they must have taken a lot of cocaine already, but I mean the way the way they they stare at the viewer uh, quite differently was just funny. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they're not even looking at the the actor's face. It's like they're just staring at at the wall. 
So that was <laughs> that was funny. Oh, and of course the, the the dialogue, you know, such as katana. What does it mean? It means Japanese sword. Or or you gotta love this dialogue, you know, from the character himself, Joe Marshall. Now I'm telling you, these son of a bitches, that we respect the Japanese of this country who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business, not for deaf merchants who distributed drugs for our children for schools and on the streets. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers that if they continue killing our children and make precious millions that they deposited in the secret Swiss bank accounts, counselors, before your last suit even gets off the clerk's desk. I have these sticky bodies in garbage bags and shipped them back to Japan for fertilizer. Got it? <laughs> Such outrageous dialogue. And he actually had to say that uh, <laughs> at a uh, local restaurant when he met uh, Fuji. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, the action scenes were very laughable, even with these sound effects that they put in, which I'm going to mention when I get to the review. But I just want to get to that one funny scene. I know I'm giving it away, but who cares? Um, there was a scene with Okimura. The it, it was a battle between Joe and him, and and that <laughs> particularly ridiculous fight because they definitely know their kung fu so you know they're, they're almost looking like they're wrestling with each other and everything and then you know because he was trying to, to cuff him you know, just like he's trying to cuff all the other bad guys and <laughs> the, there's even the, the scene where he takes the two knives on the back of his belt so he was going to get ready to slice uh, Joe, but that was too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I know. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's stop and get to the review. Um, it stars Matt Hannon, Robert Zardar, who's no longer with us, but he's been in several bad movies, Mark Fraser, Princeton Camaro, Janice Farley, Gerald Agamura, Dale Cummings, and Marissa Moore. It's written and directed by Amir Sheridan. The movie begins when we meet a renegade Japanese gang known simply as Katana, which means Japanese sword. <laughs> oh boy, that, that joke. <laughs> Technically speaking, Katana is actually a term for a Japanese sword. I mean, that's like saying uh, Yoshinoa means Japanese fast food restaurant. <laughs> but yes, uh, Katana is, is a name of a Japanese sword, which they had different names of Japanese swords out there. But this one just has a has a clean cut. Uh, they're taking control of a cocaine trade in Los Angeles, California. So the LAPD transfers a samurai cop from SDPD in San Diego, California named Joe Marshall, who's played by Matt Hannon. And he actually was chosen to, to help tackle the problem with his uh, partner uh, Frank Washington, who's played by Mark Fraser. Anyway, He's been trained by the masters in Japan and only speaks fluent Japanese, but dresses as as a commoner. Yeah, and, and plus, uh, here's the interesting story too: was that uh, since the actor only cut his hair, you know, during those shots, he was chosen to wear a feminine wig, so they could pretend like you know he didn't cut his hair. Yeah, I can see why that. There were scenes where he, he actually had to put a ponytail, so his hair was shorter. But, well, we get to that. They had it in an attempted bus that meets with failure after a bizarre car chase all the way around. Yeah, we, we see Peggy 
up on the helicopter <laughs> and we see uh, Marshall and Washington you know driving around in the detective's car <laughs> you know with the way they, they shot this movie it's like they're going from one direction to the other you know where they actually use a, a heavy cam for that you know some of them look pretty shaky and then the next scene is like shot beautifully at times they're showing the close-ups of of the city skyline like including the uh, the first interstate bank tower which is now known as US Bank yeah, beautifully shot so they went all the way straight to Marina Del Rey just so they could find the uh, the drug dealers because they're about to collect some cocaine and that's where they went to that particular bizarre car chase and this is where they dump a guy who's wearing a jacket that says WABC TV which is a station in New York. Yeah, it's an ABC affiliate. I'm thinking to myself, wow, could they afford a KBC TV jacket instead? Because this is Los Angeles, not New York. But whatever. I guess <laughs> maybe the guy was pretty lucky that he even found a rare jacket. But they ran over him too. <laughs> so they couldn't stop the brakes. So they continue going on with the chase. You know, they start shooting all the bad guys all the way throughout into the mountains until they stop right there. <laughs> so, um, well, they busted one of the guys since they just killed uh, several others. And then there was a sex scene. Yes, this movie definitely has some nudity in it, which is. I say pretty nice. So there's a like a love scene between um, Joe and Peggy. And I gotta admit, she's pretty hot. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, we meet uh, Katana's boss named Fuji Fujiyama, who's played by Princeton Kamuro, who orders the injured Katana member to be executed and have his head displayed on a piano. To remind them all the functioning katana members of the of their code of silence. Yeah. Uh, Marshall and, and Washington had to confront the katanas at uh, Carlos and Charlie's restaurant on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, this is where he says that line. But he attempts to promenade them into, into obeying the law. But when that fails, uh, Fulijama's right hand man named Yamashita. Is played by Robert Zadar. Uh, wages war in the parking lot. Yeah, this is where they have that shootout. It keeps repeatedly uh, showing the shot of, of of him actually firing the their the detective's car, and it's just uh, yeah, it, it keeps yeah he keeps on firing it with the machine gun, and and also he brought in all the game around and yeah they had all, a lot of violent shots here with just shooting all the bad guys and <laughs> they're actually hiding onto another car <laughs> as it continues and then yes they even put in a grenade and explodes it just goes on oh and of course um, um, I'm going to mention this though. Yes, there's even scenes where they actually use a lot of sound effects that are so louder than than the dialogue. I mean, yes, you could hear all these punching and kicking and grunting sounds. <laughs> that, that's just, <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Okay, on top of that, yes, uh, Yamashita even executed his own man, even though, yeah, they were shot. So that's why they maintained their code of silence. <laughs> so then the um, marshal stalks uh, Fuyama's girlfriend, Jennifer, and wants up seducing her. Yeah, because he was also, she was also the boss of the company. Also the fact that he's celebrating uh, her birthday. Yeah, they're, they're just going around inside the house, you know, just having sex. Um, you know, they're just fooling around with each other. You know, they're just going to um, the beach. 
Uh, they also went on went to a swimming pool uh, later on. So, <laughs> so they're just having fun. Meanwhile, Yomashitas, along with the gang, are, are going around um, threatening the Washington and Peggy and telling them where he is. So, I, so of course, Washington goes around uh, killing those guys. Yeah, well, Yomashita, along with a few of the guys, uh, started threatening Peggy by pouring some, I think it might have been water. It can't be oil, but if it was oil, then I think that would stun even worse. But he started pouring it on, on her stomach. Just to tell him about where he is. Yeah, poor girl. Anyway, once they found the Marshall, uh, along with Jennifer, that leads to, to that uh, chase scene a little bit throughout the entire house. And you know, trying to shoot the, the two bad guys. Yeah, one of them looking like uh, <laughs> the director... Uh, John Carpenter and the other one looking more like uh, uh, the other actor I think of. Uh, that, that was just funny. <laughs> so they escape. So then it leads to uh, another scene where Marshall had to face uh, Fuji Fuyama who just kidnapped uh, Jennifer. And Washington came along and that's when you know, they were ready to uh, stop him. After they put their guns down, uh, Fuji actually shot uh, Washington, only to know that, yes, he has a bulletproof breast, so lucky for him. <laughs> but they did shot uh, Fuji, so he's dead. And there we go. So now they have to go all the way into the mountains to not only stop uh, Yamashita, but also the rest of the bad guys. And this until we led to well, the final uh, katana sword battle uh, between the Marshall and Yamashita. And that went on, and a cool shot, which you basically see uh, Marshall looking like he, he was in the sun way too long. And then it ends a terror when Yamashita suddenly kills himself. I mean, Marshall was going to actually cut off his head at first, but that didn't happen, so there you go. And by the end of the movie, Joe and Jennifer once again suddenly have relationships, so they fell in love with each other at the beach. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 96 minutes of pure uh, B-movie fun. <laughs> if you ask me. But you know, it's kind of amazing that they took a lot of time to do this, considering that <laughs> they only took several months to shoot this movie, and they did it back in 1990, so that, that was like the summertime that they had to do it, so they finally finished it. Um, the actors themselves, um, as bad as they were, I mean, hey, <laughs> It looked to me like they were having fun, even though some of them act like you know they didn't want to be in this movie. Well, maybe for one of the guys, but that's just how ridiculous this movie was. Um, it's interesting too because the actors themselves actually wore their own clothes, and they drive their own cars, and they actually. Uh, they actually shot the movie without sound, uh, I guess for for the most part. So that's why, you know, they had to done with single takes, and and the director had to dub his own voices. Basically, had to dub the voices of the actors and just add some dialogue into it, just to make it just to make it more funny. Because of it, because they couldn't get the actors to return because of the mistake that he had to go for. And of course, the the audio was warped, just to in post production, just to sound a, a bit different, trying to make it sound more like how the actors really sound. So that's why. Um, 
It's very he heavy robotic. I, I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> so that that was just weird. Um, I can see why this movie became a cult classic, and it really shows. I mean, it's it's the kind of movie that you got to see to believe. After all the B movies that we get from years to come, as opposed to you know Hollywood's bad movies. But this is an independent movie, of course. And just to get from the details and the scenes here, um, when they went to the hospital, though, I mean, you get a girl, a redheaded girl who's disguised as a nurse, and then you have uh, Yamashita disguised as a doctor, too, which makes you wonder because he was inside the cart that she had to push. And apparently, when they went to the uh, the hospital room, yeah, this was definitely the plan that Fuji won, was to actually grab the katana and actually saw the, <clears throat> actually saw the member's head. Yeah, because the member was already been wrapped up in bandages. They just had to cut off the head and, and just getting ready to put it on in place of the piano. Also, here's another thing too, because I know the girls are, are basically act more like porn stars somewhere, <laughs> or maybe prostitutes dressed up as nurses, because yes, there's even one girl who, who wants to fuck with uh, Joe <laughs> later on. Um, it's not really a hospital. It doesn't even look and feel like one. It just feels like like they just borrowed a, a, um, a very nice... Uh, apartment. <laughs> I'm pretty certain a hospital looks more different than they may expect it. <laughs> because, you know, when it comes to hospitals, it's usually a building. This just looks like a, an apartment complex. <laughs> Weird, I know. They also have a sequel to Samurai Cop that came out in 2015, which replaces the roles of Mark Hannon and Mark Frazier. But they got a lot of actors joining in, like Bao Ling, Tommy Rousseau, yes, Tommy Rousseau from The Room, uh, as well as Joe Estevez, yeah, a relation to, to all the Estevez, Sheen family. Uh, they even brought back Marissa Moore, too. So, but it's only in, in uh, archive footages and stuff. But I think she was brought back into the... Um, I'd have to check that one out someday, so uh, I'm going to see how ridiculous that film is compared to the first movie, but, but hey, the first movie was shot on film, so <laughs> 35 millimeter. But the main reason why they made the sequel was that not only was the first movie a cult classic, but also because, you know, they actually brought its budget by a Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Yeah, just like all the other films have been too in recent years. That's Samurai Cop and I give the movie just to be fair two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.